we're heading over to a homeowner whose air conditioner quit. I dug a little deeper and they said the thermostat went blank and nothing works. So they put batteries in and the batteries made the thermostat light up but still nothing's working. I have an idea what this problem might be and I've seen this many many times and it is a simple common problem with a very easy fix and I'm hoping that's what it is but if it's not we'll dig into it see what's wrong and see if we can get it fixed now as you can see this thermostat is off you're supposed to be able to push this button right here and it'll light up well it won't and the air conditioner is not working and the fans not working nothing's working if she wanted heat the heat wouldn't work either she's on a heat pump here and as you can see the thermostat is completely dead but the homeowner put batteries in and it lit up and started working but in this case this is hardwired the batteries are only to save your settings if you should lose power you can't run a system that is shut down like this so we're going to start with the potentially easiest problem first and we'll work our way from there first thing we're going to do is go out in the utility room and check the breaker. So we have the dishwasher, the range, which is 220, and the AC is 220. Now I'm gonna, it looks like that hasn't tripped, but even though it looks like that, I'm still gonna turn it off and turn it back on. Then the dryer, and then the heater. And this one looks like it's off just a little bit. Of course, it's 220. We'll flip that off, flip it back on, and it's still off a little bit. So that's probably not our problem, but that's the place to start. Let's go in and see if the thermostat's back on. Okay, we'll touch that, came on, and then you push this button here, it's set to off, and we want cool. We're 77 in here right now and it's set at 74. Now there's a little delay for the unit to reset and we'll see if it kicks on. Now there's an indicator on here that says wait so I'm gonna go up into the attic where the unit is and show you a real typical problem whether this is the problem with this or not we'll find out but we've been waiting here a little while and it hasn't fired up so let's go up and check that out. Okay, and here we are up at the unit, and you can see there's water on the catwalk up here, which is not good at all. There's water in the pan right down there, which is not good, and that's a switch right there, a safety switch that shuts the unit off. What happens is homeowners neglect the condensate line and you can see the trap right there that clogs and then the condensation runs into the pan the water gets high enough not running out and it shuts the unit off now this switch is your friend if that wasn't there as you saw there's a lot of water on the catwalk here if that switch wasn't there all that water would overflow and your sheetrock would get soaking wet and it would start leaking down into your house. Not a good thing. And this homeowner is all set with a flush. All they need to do is pour this in even once a year and they can avoid a problem like this. What we're gonna do is pull this cap off of here and this gets clogged up right in here. So I'm just gonna run this down through here. You can already see there's junk in there. I don't know if you can see that on the end of that. But I'm gonna push that through. That'll open that up. Now I push that all the way down to here. So I've got that flushed out. 
but this is keeping the unit off. Now you see that PVC goes into that pan there? That's the overflow. If you ever have a problem, the water goes into the pan, it's supposed to go into that PVC and out the back wall of the house and drip outside. Well, the reason that this wood got all wet is because there's not a tight seal on this pan. It's not good. But now we've got the condensate line open. We've got to get the pan cleared of the water and that'll reset that and the unit will start working again. So you got to keep an eye on that and this is a most, most common problem. Now we're going to get a shop vac and clean this all out, but you can pour a little bleach down in here or this homeowner has this specifically for this. The main thing is to keep that clear. I, I don't know what this stuff is. Globber emergency drain line opener. <laughs> but it'll get rid of the bacteria and get piles up in there. So I'll just dump a little bit in there and then as the unit runs it'll clear that out. But the water it is in a pan in here. It flows out here and it goes down. I can hear it gurgling. <laughs> That's good. I don't know if you can hear that draining, but this is opened up now and it's draining. Now we're going to clean out the pan. We got the unit off. We're going to clean out the pan, clean that switch, and get it all set up so it's good to go. And you can imagine what all that water would do if it leaked down onto your drywall and into your house. So it's good they have a pan. When they put them up in the attic, they put a pan underneath them, or they should. And that's just part of the water we got out of there. It's good to keep an eye on this. Now what I'm going to do is dump some water down here to make sure we're all clear. And there was probably three quarters of this bucket. So I'm feeling confident that's clear. And that's enough to fill that trap there. And we'll put the cap back on. Now a lot of units set up this way will have a primary float switch right here. So if this gets clogged, the water will build up and there's a float in here. That float will come up and it'll shut your unit off just like we experienced. Then there's a secondary switch in the pan. Now that's the one that stopped the unit in this case and that's down there. For whatever reason the installer didn't hook up the primary switch and this thing's kind of messed up anyways but typically there's a float in here the float will float up, it'll send a signal through the wire here to shut the unit off. Now if you're in Florida your setup might be a little different and we can go outside and I'll show you how you can clean out this drain line without having to take this all apart. Now if you're in a place like Florida your condensate drain line will come out near your condensing unit on the outside of your house. If that gets clogged, what you can do is hook up a shop vac to the end of that drain line, seal it off good so you get good suction on that line, and you can suck the debris out that way. Now you might have a setup like this in your basement, and the evaporator coil is right behind this panel here. That's what causes the condensation, the water, to fill up, and it drains out this pipe here, and then goes into that trap just like I showed you on the other one and you need to keep that trap clean well in a basement situation like this the water runs down that pipe instead of going outside the house it goes into a pump and this pump turns on when the water level gets so high and it goes out this pipe here and pumps it outside your house if this pump stops operating, malfunctions for any reason, 
the water will back up and it'll shut your system down just like I showed you earlier. So check your pump. That could be your problem depending on your setup. We're all clean and dry in the pan. Everything should be reset. Let's go back downstairs and test it out. And while I'm up here, I just wanted to show you this cover that I made for the hole, scuttle hole. It's pretty slick. I made it with one inch styrofoam and glued it all together with pure silicone. And it's been up here for quite a while, but it really seals that off. Got a little strap down there to hold it in place when you're coming in here. And I'll show you what it's like when it's down. Of course I do this after I've gone out. But... And I put R19 in the top and she's good. That seals that right up. Incredible what that does for the heating bill and cooling. And I put just a rubber strip seal all the way around that it fits into. And there it is. And the stairs fit right up in there the way I built it. And here we are in the bathroom underneath the unit. And it did leak through. Not good, but just a little bit. That'll dry up. Little kills, primer on it. And then paint over that and you'll be good to go. But be sure to keep your condensate line drain clean. That's the key. And here we are back at the thermostat. Just got a tap here to light it up. And it's on off right now. Turn it to cool. It's flashing. It has to reset itself. All right, it's getting set up. We're at 74. I just heard the AC turn on. And this homeowner should be good to go. If this video was a help to you, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And I look forward to helping you with other projects online.